Hello and welcome to the Ultimate Beginner Series for Acoustic Guitar. My name is Keith Wyatt and I'll be your guide in this video as we explore the world of acoustic guitar. Now looking around me here, I see all these guys playing electric, but I'd be willing to bet that every one of them started out on acoustic and some of them are still pretty well known for what they do on the acoustic. Now the basic techniques of, of uh, the chord forms and even how you hold the pick, things like that, are not that much different from electric, but what really makes acoustic different is the way that it's used. People use it more for backing up singers. It's a great rhythm instrument when a bunch of people are sitting around having a good time and it has a unique sound all its own. So we'll explore the things that make acoustic what it is. And in the next half hour, I hope that you'll learn a lot more, not only about acoustic playing, but about guitar in general. So let's get started. Now the first thing we need to do before we start doing anything else is to tune up. If you have a piano or another source of pitch that you can tune to, that's fine. If you don't, I'm going to give you uh, some notes here so you can tune your guitar to me. All right? We'll start with the low E string. So I'll play the note and you tune your string to mine. If you need to, you can always roll the tape back and hear it again. Here we go, low E. And here's A. And D. B, and high E. Now the advantage of an acoustic over an electric is pretty obvious because you don't have to lug around an amplifier, but electric guitar has an advantage in that it's just louder. It's better as a solo instrument. Acoustic is used more for accompaniment and so we concentrate more on chords and that's what we're going to do in this video. Now even among acoustics there are different kinds of acoustics, uh, steel string and nylon string. As you may notice here I'm playing a nylon string acoustic. And the advantage of nylon string for a beginner especially is that the strings are a little softer on the fingers. The whole guitar has a softer sound. It doesn't bite quite as much but uh, it has a mellow quality that's all its own. Uh, if you play a steel string or a nylon string, the techniques and the styles that we'll be showing are really completely the same. In both cases, you're going to want to start with a set of chords that, uh, well, everyone pretty much learns these chords right at the beginning. They're called the open position chords. Now, I'm going to assume that uh, you've already got some basic knowledge of the guitar, so we'll review these chords quickly, okay? If you don't know these, you might want to stop and spend a little time with these before we move on. This first chord is E major. The root is on the sixth string and first string as well as the fourth string, second finger, third finger, first finger. The next chord right next door, open chord, is A major. The root is the open A string. You also find an A on the third string. Second finger, third finger, fourth finger, and you have to keep your wrist down, keep those fingers up so that you can hear the open first string ring out. And when you strum that chord, be careful not to strum the sixth string. You want to start from the fifth and work your way up. And next to that we have D major. And here the root is on the fourth string, open D. First finger, third finger, and second finger on top. And there, be careful when you, when you strum, whether you're using your thumb or your pick, we'll talk about right hand in a second. Um, make sure you strum from the fourth string up. All right, let's do a little exercise just to get warmed up here between those chords. We're gonna start with E, and then I'll call out the chords. And as I call them out, you form them and play them. All right, start with E. Three, four. Now we go to A. 
back to E. Make that transition smooth. Work on getting all the fingers to go down together. One more time. And back again. Now we're going to go to D. Here we go. And back to A. Back to D again. Back to A. And to E. Now D. Now to A. And back home. The next chord I'm going to show you, which is uh, hopefully a familiar chord, is G. Let's go to the big fat chord here. Third finger plays the high G, and then there's nothing happening until you get over to the first finger on the fifth string, second fret, and the second finger. Now the trick here is to keep those middle three strings, the fourth, third, and second strings, open. Nice, clear, ringing sound. Real big chord. And then another chord right close by is the C. Here the root is on the fifth string and also the second string. And the chord is formed with the third finger, second finger, open G, first finger, open E. In this one, be careful not to strum the low E string. All right, let's put the G chord and the C chord to work for a second. Start with G and play along with me. Three, four. Now switch to C. All the fingers have to move as a group. And back again. Keep your fingers low to the fingerboard. And press them down together. This is the kind of thing you practice on your own until it feels comfortable. Now play D. Remember D? And back to G again. Now there's one other commonly used open position chord. It's a little different. It's called B7, and I'm not going to tell you why the seven's on there, other than it makes the chord complicated, all right? <laughs> Sounds like this. You can hear in the sound of the chord that it has a little bit more complexity. That's the seventh. That's what makes it a seventh chord. Second finger, first finger, third finger, open B string, and fourth finger on top. This requires all four fingers. this one again, you don't play the bottom string, don't play the sixth string. All right? And putting that one to work, play uh, the B chord. Now play A. Back to B. Back to A. Now play E. Once again, somewhere in there you can probably hear a song starting to emerge. Now to practice these chords, and this is kind of review material, getting us ready for the next step, what I would suggest is as simple as this. You've got six chords here. You've got the E, A, D, G, and C, plus the B7. And what you can do, this might sound silly, but this, this works. Write those six letters of the alphabet down on a piece of paper in any order, random order, any way you want and then play the chords in the order that you wrote them and mix them up all the time. The goal of this kind of exercise is to be able to make a shift from any chord to any other chord instantly. The fingers going down as a group, it requires memorization of the fingering shapes and that's the essence of building your technique. So go ahead and work on that for a minute and then we'll come back and, and uh, take a look at some other techniques. Now before we talk about any new chords, let's talk a little bit about picking, about the right hand. Now in acoustic guitar, it's not uncommon for people not to use a pick at all. And perhaps as you're watching this video, you don't have a pick. It's not necessary. The advantage of not using a pick is that you don't have to learn how to hold the thing, which is kind of a new technique. The disadvantage is that using only your thumb or thumb and fingers, the sound is pretty soft and even with a steel string guitar it may not project as well 
as with a pick. So I recommend that you learn to play both ways. Now I'm going to show you a little bit about the pick right now. Now holding a pick is actually a very natural motion. Your hand is just dangling on the end of your arm and turn it over and let the natural motion of your muscles bring your thumb and forefinger together and then place the pick in between. When you bring your hand back to the guitar, you can adjust the pick a little bit so that it's pointing straight down at the body of the guitar. It should be perpendicular to the strings. And then the right hand is moving in a natural, comfortable arc across the sound hole. All right now, other than that, it gets down to specialized motions of the pick, which we'll be talking about as we go along. But there's one other thing I want to say about the pick on acoustic guitar. Uh, electric guitar players tend to use heavy picks. On acoustic, I recommend a light to medium pick. And the reason is that a lighter pick brings out the sound of the guitar more. It makes it ring. And since we're strumming a lot, it's going to make the guitar sound bigger. So when you're shopping for picks, get a light to medium pick and see how that feels. All right, using the chords that we've already learned, the open position chords, let's uh, work on some strumming patterns. And I'm going to be using a pick, but of course you're free to use your thumb or fingers as you wish. Now, um, the first pattern is very simple. You just play one stroke of the pick for every beat of the music. And let's make up a little chord pattern here. We'll go from E to D to A. And just back and forth around those three chords. All right. Play with me. Here we go. All down strokes. Three, four. Now, even as I was playing that pattern, I couldn't help but put in a little upstroke there. It feels so natural. So let's talk about upstrokes. Picking basically has two parts to it. There's the downstroke and the upstroke. And you probably even accidentally hit some upstrokes once in a while. It sounds good. What you're doing is helping to fill out the rhythm. So a typical pattern, just on an E chord that would include down and up, might be something like this. doing is working on a repetitive pattern, something that you can use on every chord the same. All right, let's play that across our progression, E, D, and A. Here we go. Three, four. making those chord transitions clean, that's really, really important. And as I said before, that's something to work on as we continue. You can stop the tape and work out each one of these little patterns, and then you'll be more prepared for the next thing that we do. Now, what we are going to talk about next is another technique that's quite common to acoustic, and that's picking out the bass note as a separate note from the chord. That's why it's so important to know where your roots are so that you can use the pick to find them. Starting with the E chord, playing a typical bass chord pattern, which sounds something like this. Right. What I'm doing there is picking out the lowest note of the chord and then strumming the upper part of the chord. And I'm using all down strokes. Play along. Now when I pick that low note, I kind of stop the pick and then continue. that makes for a cleaner sound. Using the same technique on the A chord. This is where the aim of the pick becomes very important because if you're not aiming properly, you're going to hit the wrong strings. It's okay to look down at your right hand once your left hand is in place and concentrate on hitting that bass note. D chord. G chord would be the same technique. That's such a big chord, it sounds really nice with that technique. The C chord with the root on the fifth string. And also our B7 chord. Let's play a little pattern using that technique, and here's what we'll do. We'll play uh, G, 
to C, to D, to G. That'll give you a chance to play bass notes on each string. Okay, play along with me. Here we go. Three, four. And back to G. Again. Now a variation on that style of picking is to use two different bass notes in the chord. And the simplest way to go about it at the beginning is do like we did, play the lowest note and then play the next highest note. And you alternate between the two so it sounds like this on the E chord. All down strokes. Remember you pick the low note and then strum the upper part of the chord. When you use that same move on other chords, you'll find different bass notes. A. Actually, on the A chord, you can use the low E string as well. The D chord. Now that chord gets pretty high, so I'm going to use the open A string as a bass note here. Your ear pretty much will tell you what works and what doesn't. For the G chord, that's the 6th string, 5th string. You can also try 6th string, 4th string. That's a little trickier because you have to skip over a string to pick. So that might take some practice. For the C chord, Fifth string, fourth string, root, oops. Now here's a variation I'm going to show you. This is something you would have to work on, but you can get a little better sound out of the C chord like this. C, and then shift that third finger over while keeping the other fingers down. Only one finger moves. Keep that third finger moving, keep the other fingers down. And the same thing also works for the B chord. First of all, try it with the 5th string and 4th string alternating. And for the bigger sound, get the 2nd finger moving like that. Keep the other fingers down and move only that one finger and it sounds like this. I should point out that on all of these uh, picking patterns here, you can use the thumb the same way that you use the pick. And the thumb just plays down strokes, like on the E chord. You pluck that low string and then brush it across the high strings. When you have a chord that has an alternating bass, it's still the same. The difference between the thumb and the pick is that the uh, thumb has that mellow sound. The pick is much brighter. For that reason, some people use a thumb pick. It's a pick that you strap right onto your thumb, and it still allows the free use of the bare fingers. It's kind of a compromise. Now, using a thumb pick is somewhat specialized as a technique. Uh, I don't use one much personally, but uh, it's one that a lot of people find very comfortable. So it's something to check into if you're serious about playing acoustic. Up to this point, we've been dealing with one type of chord, major chords. The exception being, of course, our old pal, the B7, which kind of jumped the gun. We're going to learn more seventh chords in a second. There are two other main categories of chords besides major, and those include not only the seventh chords, but minor chords. First of all, taking E major, if you lift up your index finger, play the same chord but with an open G string, you have an E minor chord. Listen to the difference. E major, E minor. 
Now what you've done there is change the third note of the chord, that's the th third note of the scale there, lower to half step. It's called a minor third, and hence the name minor chord. If you apply the same thing to the A chord, that's your A chord, that's the third note right there, and play the note a half step below, the minor third, you've got A minor, major, minor, you can use the top string in either chord if you wish. Now the D chord, there's the third there, and lowered to a minor third. It requires you to refinger the chord. Those are the common open position minor chords. The G minor chord and the C minor chord don't adapt well to open position, so we'll look at another way to handle those in a minute. Now take the minor chords and practice them, even though there are only three of them, as you have the major chords, back and forth until you feel comfortable. Now the third category of chords is the seventh chords. And the uh, seventh chord is created by starting major triad. And in most cases, we've got more than one root in the chord. In the E, remember, there were three of them, E, E, and E. We replace one of the roots with the note a whole step below. In this case, it requires lifting up the third finger to reveal the open string. And that's a seventh chord. It has kind of a bluesy sound. Major, seventh. For the A chord, if you lift up your third finger, it reveals an A dominant seventh. This is dominant, by the way. That's the official name for that chord. A major, A dominant seventh, D major. This one requires a refingering. When the D goes down a whole step, the other fingers have to fit around it. D major, D seventh. The G chord also requires a little refingering. G major, G seven again. G major, G7, and finally C. Now in C, instead of replacing the C, we simply add the note a whole step below, but due to the tuning of the guitar, it winds up on the third string. Third fret on the third string played with the fourth finger. There's C7, and we already know B7. So we finished all the open position seventh chords. Now these are chords that you would find in bluesy kind of progressions or in progressions with major and minor as well. They can be mixed together. little example there of finger picking. Now finger picking moves into a different realm of technique in which you have to use the thumb and fingers independently of one another. Now we've laid the basis for the technique already so let's explore how it's different. First of all let's start with an E chord, a familiar chord here. We'll play a familiar bass line but this time use your thumb. If you use the thumb pick already well then you probably already know what I'm going to do here but Otherwise, just use your bare thumb. I'm using two down strokes, nice and even. Now, the trick part here is that you're gonna use your index finger to play an upstroke. And we'll start out playing the upstroke at the same time as the downstroke. And it'll sound like this. Every time I play a bass note, I pluck the open high string. Once you get a little feel for that, here's the trick part. We're also going to pluck it sometimes in between the bass notes, and it'll sound like this. So the bass note is going down, the finger's coming up in between. 
See if you can lock in with what I'm doing. Now to play a nice picking pattern, what you need to do is develop a variation of notes that are on the beat and notes that are off the beat. That is played with the bass note or in between the bass notes. And so for instance, you might try something like this. Patterns like that take a little while to master, so take that shape and just work with it until you can play it without thinking too hard, because here's what's going to happen. We're going to move it to other chords. Let's take the A chord, for instance. Form your left hand into position. Now, so far, you don't have to do anything with the left hand. Once it's clamped down on the chord, you just leave it there and concentrate on your right hand. Same pattern. There's our bass. Together. Alternating and playing a pattern. And the same thing will apply to any of the open chords that we've learned D, How about G. C, using that alternating bass there, and B. Now there are a lot of variations that you can play on that type of pattern, and when you listen to folk guitar recordings or any other style of finger picking, you're hearing a lot of different ways of using that particular technique on the beat, off the beat, combined with different left hand techniques as well. <laughs> Now while we're in this uh, territory down here dealing with open position chords, let's talk about some other ways to make the chord progressions and the chords themselves interesting. And one very common way is to add notes to the chords by using a technique known as hammer-ons and pull-offs. Now since we're playing chords that use open strings, in uh, most cases here we're not using all of the fingers. The only chord that uses all the fingers is the B7 chord. The E chord, for instance, leaves a fourth finger uh, dangling out in the wind here. So if I want to use that finger, here's how I could do it, for instance. Now what I'm doing there is, is hammering on. In other words, I'm playing a note without actually picking it. And to get a close-up of the technique here, I'm going to get rid of these fingers, which are not involved. My first finger is holding down the first fret on the third string, and my fourth finger lands on the second fret of the same string. And here's the effect when you hear it isolated. I only pick the first note, and then it's the impact of the finger against the string that creates the sound of the second note. You can even do a pull-off. A pull-off is when you pluck the note by pulling the finger to the side. And a double hammer on and pull off together. Right, now that's why it's a good idea to build up your fourth finger along with everything else. Don't abandon the fourth finger when you're practicing technique. All right, once again, putting it back in the chord. Here's the E chord. Adding the fourth finger. Pulling it off. Right. What it does is dress up the sound of the chord. You can do the same thing on the second string. There I'm going from the open string to the second fret. Hammer on, pull off. First string.
Now that doesn't really alter the character of the chord very much. It just sort of adds color to the basic sound. And by a little experimentation, you'll find that on every one of the chords that we've worked with, you can find the same thing. With the A chord, using the fingering we've had, uh, it requires moving the fourth finger or lifting up the fourth finger to reveal the open second string. Sounds kind of nice. Here's one that's very common, and a lot of people have used this in recordings. On the D chord, with the fourth finger hammering on the third fret, and then with the second finger pulling off to the open string. It's a pretty common one. The G chord, due to the way it's fingered, if you finger it like this, you're kind of stuck. You can't really make much use of the fourth finger. If you refinger it, though, with the fourth finger on the high string, third finger on the low string, and the second finger on the fifth string, that leaves the first finger free to add the note on the second string at the first fret. And so you get the same effect. With the C chord, the fourth finger can add the fourth string, third fret, and the second finger, if lifted up, reveals the open string. You can embellish the minor chords the same as you do the, the major chords. By that I mean adding notes to the chord or uh, pulling off notes from the chord. There's the A minor, adding the note with the fourth finger and pulling off to the open string. D minor. And so forth. There are other variations as well, and with a little experimentation, just using your ear, and, and once you're comfortable with the chord, then adding notes to it, you can come up with a lot of variety in your rhythm parts without really changing the basic nature of the chords that you're playing. What do you do when you want to play in another key? Well, there are two ways to deal with that. And I'll show you one right now, which is mainly used by acoustic guitarists. And that's to use a device that's a little something like this. This is called a capo, or according to some, it's a cheater. And I'll show you why. Now, they come in a lot of different varieties. Yours may not look like mine. If you go to a music store, you might see one like this, and you might see others as well. They all operate on the same principle. The way that the strings vibrate they vibrate between the bridge and the nut. This is the nut here, and that's where the strings stop. There is no more vibration after that point. And so we have open strings tuned to match the sound that, that's at the nut. Uh, if I want to change to a different key, then what I can do is take this clamp here, this capo, and in this case it goes over the top, and it kind of clamps the strings down like that right behind one of the frets. And voila, a new set of open strings. This is functioning as a new nut. So what was an E down here, now I'm up three frets, it becomes a G. And every other string has been moved up accordingly. So what does that do to my chords? Well, what was an E chord is now a, a G chord. What was an A chord is now a C chord. What was a D chord is now an F chord. The G chord becomes B flat, of all things. The C chord is E flat, and our B7 becomes D7. Right? So if I wanted to play a song in a different key, well, why would I do that? Probably because vocally, either my own voice or someone else's voice that I'm backing up would uh, sound better in a new key. And so I still have the advantage of playing the open chords, and yet I can play in any key I want by moving the capo around.
A welcome to our little world where we can take a close-up look at an acoustic guitar. And the reason that we're coming here is specifically to learn the names of the notes on two strings. Now ultimately it's really important to know the names of all the notes everywhere on the neck. But for right now we don't need to know it all. We can get by with two strings because that's where the roots of all the chords that we're moving around are located. So if we can memorize the names of those two sets of notes, you're going to be able to find your way around much more quickly when you're playing chord progressions. All right, let's take a look. The open string is E, and one fret up is the next letter name. That's F, E, F. And then it's two frets from there on, F to G, G to A, A to B, and now we have another half step, B to C. That's one fret, and then C to D, two frets, and D to E, that's another two frets. Now this is the octave. The letter name E at the octave is the same as the letter name and the sound of the note at the open string. And you notice the two dots down here help you keep your place. All right. To review quickly, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, and E. Going to the fifth string, the open fifth string is A. A to B is two frets, and then we have that one fret between B and C. Moving up again, two frets to D, two frets to E, one fret to F, two frets to G, and two frets to the octave, A. And reviewing again, open string is A, then two frets to B, C, D, E, one fret to F, G, and E. A. Now if you know where those notes are on the neck and can find them quickly, you're going to be able to play your progressions much more comfortably. So I recommend that you take a piece of paper and draw two lines along it for the strings and draw 12 vertical lines for the frets and write the locations of those notes in on the paper so you can look at it while you practice your chord progressions. It'll help you get around a lot more quickly. All right, let's go back to reality. Now, as I mentioned, the capo is one way to deal with the problem of playing in other keys, but we're rough, we're tough, we don't need that kind of thing. we got another way to deal with it, too. This is called bar chords. Now, bar chord is basically an attempt to recreate open chords using the first finger to compensate for the nut. Let me explain that. Here's an E major chord in open position. Now suppose I want to play F. I've got two choices, either clamp the capo on the first fret or play a bar chord. Well, to play a bar chord, what I do is pretend that my first finger is the nut. If I play an E chord, it would look like this. Now notice I've re-fingered it. I'm using the third finger, fourth finger, and second finger instead of what I was using before because my first finger is occupied here. If I take that shape, and move it up one fret and clamp down hard with my first finger, there's an F chord. Now, bar chords, and especially the F major bar chord, are kind of a rude introduction to a brand new technique. It's going to cause a lot of pain in the first stages here because you're going to cut some new grooves in your fingers. But uh, most of it really isn't a matter of building up calluses or anything like that. It's more learning where to position your finger. Now, I'm not laying my finger flat like this. It's rolled slightly to the side. It's a little bonier that way, and so you get a better grip. And I'm also adjusting it crosswise on the neck so that I find a spot that doesn't have any dead positions in it so that all the strings ring equally. There's a partial bar chord that you can play, which uses only the top four strings, and it offers a little bit of relief. Bar with your index finger, the top two strings, second finger, third finger. Now once you can play a bar chord, either the partial or the full shape, you can play in any key. There's G, there's A, down a half step is called A flat, and so on. So I can play a major chord anywhere that I want to. The sound is different. Open strings bar chord. The bar chord has slightly less resonance, hence the use of the capo. Now I can also play a minor chord using a bar shape, or I can play a dominant chord using a bar shape as well. And the shape is the same as it was in open position. 
Now there's one other bar shape that you'll find extremely useful, and this is based on the A chord. Here's our old pal, the A chord. Now once again, if I use my index finger as a pretend bar, and then actually move it up and lay it on the neck, I get this right here. This is a B flat major triad. Now this one is gonna cause some intense pain and suffering. If you start to feel your hand cramp up, just stop and take a break. But eventually, you'll be able to play this one as well. Thumb behind the neck, first finger puts down a lot of pressure, barring from the fifth over to the first string. And of course, that can be played in other keys as well. A variation that might be a little bit easier, but sacrifices the top string, is this one right here. You're gonna just hear a dead top string there. But it uh, doesn't involve crowding the fingers as much. Now to convert that A shape to a minor and dominant, first finger the A minor chord, using the third, fourth, and second fingers, and then move it up, B flat minor, C minor, and so on. And then dominant, refingered, and then moved up. We now have a B flat chord, C7, etc. So the result is that when you're given a chord progression, you can play in any key with a combination of open chords and bar chords. With that set of possibilities, you've really got all the variety you need to play practically anything. Well, it looks like our time is up already. I know in the last half hour we packed a lot of information into this video, and it'll probably take you more than a half an hour to get it down, and there's a whole lot more left to learn. If you're interested in soloing or interested in electric guitar, you can check out the Ultimate Beginner Series for electric as well. It covers a little bit different territory, so you might find it pretty interesting. The real question is what to do after that. Where do you go? What's your next step? Many people will study out of books or off of other kinds of videos if you want to study by yourself, but I generally recommend that you get a good teacher, somebody that's been there before that can show you the shortcuts and the paths to avoid and save you a lot of time. If you're serious about it, you might wind up in a music school where you can really immerse yourself in music, but whatever you decide to do, there are three main areas that you want to keep intact, whatever you study, and that's the knowledge, knowing the language of music, about theory, about what the facts are behind the chords and the scales. Second, the technique, so that you can execute the sounds that you hear in your head. And finally, experience. That's playing by yourself, it's playing with friends, most of all playing in front of an audience so that you can have somebody to communicate with, because that's really what it's all about. So I hope whatever you got out of this video is going to help you be a better guitar player, and I'll look forward to seeing you the next time.